All right. I'm going to go ahead and call in on this live line. Normally, I'd be playing music right now, but it's free coaching Friday, baby. So. Hope everybody's had an incredible week. Give me a replay, gang, if you're checking out the replay. If you're feeling hella good about life, you know, check in time. This is going to be a real good episode. Welcome to October 1st, man. Welcome to the fourth quarter. If you haven't ordered your 90-day map, this is a good time. Also, before the holiday season gets here, you might want to check out uh, the world's first visualization coloring book. Uh, Tanisha, what's up, Tanisha? Hey, what's up, Mia? I like that avatar. Faith can move mountains. I'm going to go ahead and call in on this live line. So we can get this party started. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, this is Les Brown, and you're in the right place at the right time because we're going to bring the millionaire out of the. Please enter your. Everybody ready? Thank you. Please announce yourself. This is Willette. Say that again. Entry and exit tones are off. Just getting to it. Hey, Willette, you know how these crowds don't go. Entry tones are off. Exit tones are on. (laughs) All participants are muted. Uh, Zeke, better get on. (laughs) What's up, Willette? Hold up. Let me make it so everybody can unmute. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. My man Spoon in the house. What's up, Taylor? All right, Arsenio in the building. Let's get it. Let's get it. Young Coco up in here. Young Coco Chanel. All right, so this week, um, we had a pretty good week, I think. Um, I don't know how y'all felt. Yeah, I need to be asking, not telling, huh? But um, Thursday, we covered... Nine confidence builders that any entrepreneur can use. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you because I want to know what your favorite class was this week. Please tell me in the comments. Uh, Wednesday, we covered five ways to stop caring if people like you. Um, that's what we did on Wednesday. On Tuesday, we went through six signs that your success is inevitable. We went through six signs that your success is inevitable. Uh, that, that was, uh, Tuesday. And then Monday we did seven, uh, seven reasons that most people are unhappy. We did a lot of mindset this week. I hope you didn't mind that. We did a lot of mindset this week. You see what I did there? (laughs) I hope you didn't mind that we spent so much time on mindset. Which one of those was your favorite class this week? I'm just curious. Anybody feel like sharing? Throw it in the comments for me. Crystal's in the house. What's up? What's up? Ali, I was wondering where you was, Queen. All right, now, you know, we ain't got no party till Ali get here. Or Shalanda. We ain't got no party till Shalanda's in the house. The prophetess is in the building. Okay, Mrs. Thicklin. Uh, my man JT Warren in the house. Which one was your favorite uh, class this weekend? Uh, or this week, I meant to say. Yeah, Orlando, stand up. Which one was your favorite class? <laughs> Appreciate that, Kermit. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite was seven reasons that most people are unhappy, Dennis. All right, I could dig that. What about everybody else? What was your favorite class this weekend? I mean, this week, I keep saying this weekend. What is wrong with me? So it's free coaching Friday. 
It's all about us um, kind of like getting, okay, okay. Six signs that make success inevitable. Six signs your success is, is, is uh, inevitable. I love that. I love that. What, which one did we cover Wednesday? Oh, oh, the ways to not care what people think. I could dig that. I, I, I could dig that. I'm, I'm always really curious what people like the most. Um, yeah, five ways to stop. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Last Saturday, Kaizen Academy, we did a pair allegedly 21 sales triggers but we really did more like 30 huh chris we really did more like 30 appreciate that share dennis um so if you're just now getting here you know we do this every single day five days a week this week we focused a lot on mindset if you want to work on your mindset i want to encourage you to grab the world's first vision board coloring book because it's like conditioning you know we always be like repetition is the father of mastery just like repetition is the mother of belief um we can we can change a lot about our lives if we change our philosophy and change our belief system and um this thing can kind of help yeah what's up chanel what's up miss miss chanel turner we got another chanel in the house i love that Oh, yeah. And if you're in financial services, you know we're here for you. We believe that illiteracy creates bondage. Um, you may want to write that in your notes. Illiteracy creates bondage. That's why back in the days of chattel slavery, it was illegal for a slave to know how to read and write. My man Adam checking in. Um, it was illegal for a slave to know how to read and write because in the words of Frederick Douglass, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. And uh, what we believe is that while most people can read and write today, not everybody, but most, they had to change around what the illiteracy vibe was. And today's new form of illiteracy is financial. I mean, you got to think about it. Isn't it wild that the rich are getting richer while the poor are getting poorer? Isn't that kind of crazy? Well, what makes it even worse is that the rich are getting richer off the poor getting poorer. I'll give you an example. Like banks made billions of dollars last year off insufficient fund fees, and they're doing it again this year. Every single year, banks make billions with a B off insufficient fund fees. You got to think about it. Like credit score itself is designed to make it so the less you have, the more you pay, right? Because when you have bad credit, you're still having to come up with the money. It's just you have to pay way more for the stuff that everybody else enjoys. You ever watch one of them commercials? And, and it's like a, a Jaguar truck or some kind of like BMW. And it'd be like $2.99 a month. And then at the bottom, it'd be like... Well, what they're saying at the bottom is you better have good credit or get out of here. <laughs> if you don't have good credit, you're going to pay $8.99, not $2.99. So that's crazy. You know, the less money you have, the more, to, the more you pay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. <laughs> If you haven't joined our uh, newsletter, I want to encourage you to. But right now, it's Free Coaching Friday. So throw your questions in here. If you're on the live line, then star six will unmute your line. We want to hear your question. You can ask us about anything we covered this week. Or you can just ask us about anything regarding your business. Um, we're here to help you grow this thing. Uh, we believe entrepreneurs are the cream of planet Earth. Share this with an entrepreneur. Maybe some of you have gotten questions this week from your downline or questions this week from your, you know, counterparts. And maybe you want a second opinion. This is your time. Let me see who gets the first question today. Tanisha LaShawn, you get question number one. What you got for us, Queen? Tanisha LaShawn gets question number one. Mia gets question number two. Um, throw them in the comments, or you can call in on the live line, which is 667-776-9461. 667-776-9461. Okay, Kianda like Wednesday the best. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It helps me a lot. All right. Um, my man Jamal Flono was like... Uh, how do you get out of a slump 
when you aren't getting the results that you want? How do you get out of a slump when you aren't getting the results that you want? That's a real good question, Jamal. Um, you know, getting out of a slump and never getting into one really have the same answer to me. And that is to set habits. What you have to realize is that a lot of times a slump is coming from the fact that we have sort of a fear. Like one of my mentors was like, there's no such thing as writer's block. It's just really the fear that what you're doing ain't going to work. So a lot of times when you feel like you're in a slump, what you're really dealing with is a conditioning that um, kind of like makes you feel like what you're doing is, 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 is purposeless because nobody wants to do anything where they're not going to get the results they want. Um, Y'all remember that story about the fox and the grapes? Where, where the fox is like going for the grapes and whatnot. And um, so he tries to push a rock over there. He tries to jump. And then before you know it, he's like, man, them grapes probably sour anyway. That's where we get the expression sour grapes. You know what I mean? From this Aesop's fable called the fox and the grapes. And what that shows us is that desire and belief are uh, just irreparably linked. There's nothing you can do about it. You have more desire for something once you believe it's possible. Like um, if you're going car shopping or if you're going shopping for clothes and you see this particular car, you see this particular sweater you want, whatever it is, and you feel like you can get it. You just need one more paycheck or something like that. You remember that? And um, you start it starts to haunt you because you feel like it's really possible. But. You know, if you go like on Rodeo Drive, you be picking up a fork. There, there are stores you can walk in. You pick up a fork. You pick up a spoon. And that spoon is like $1,200. That don't haunt you. Because you're like, I ain't spending $1,200. i am not. I don't know about some of y'all. I'm not spending $1,200 on a spoon. Is you crazy? So no no desire. Because because I don't. So So my point is that. A lot of times what you have to do, man, if you want to get out of a slump, what I suggest is start with really small actions that begin to cast votes for a new self-image. In the Kaizen Academy, we have this whole class on habit construction. And one of the most powerful ways to create new habits is to put yourself in a place where you do the two-minute version of that big goal the two minute version of the activity that uh, you know leads to progress. So, so for instance, if you wanna work out and you feel like you're in a slump when it comes to working out, you don't have to necessarily start with just going to the gym. What you can start with is just putting on your workout clothes. Every day when you come home from work, put on your workout clothes. Okay, if you don't wanna do that, just, just take off your hard bottoms and put on some sneakers. Put on your tennis shoes, right? Like, and then tie them up and then take them off. You do that three or four times in a row. And guess what? You change your self image into the kind of person who comes home from work and puts on their sneakers. You, you know what I mean? Puts on this, their, their, their tennis shoes. My point to you is that before you know it, you'll be the kind of person who puts on your whole workout outfit when you come home from clothes, uh, uh, when you come home from work. Then before you know it, you're the kind of person who drives to the gym every day when you get off work. Next thing you know, you're the kind of person who gets off work and walks on the treadmill for 10 minutes. Next thing you know, you're the kind of person who, you know, works out for 30 minutes. But it's because you started casting votes for this new self-image. Does that make sense? So same thing with a business slump, man. You know, all you got to do is do the two minute version. So right now, maybe you're the kind of person who comes home and immediately, you know, turns on the television. Well, you know what I mean? Instead of that, maybe you, since we know environment begins to, you know, overpower our will, what we can do is change our environment. So, so what I teach is if you come home and normally turn on the television and you need that vital couple seconds between trigger 
and you just responding because that's how habits work. You get a trigger, then a response, right? A trigger, a response, and a reward, right? That's how addiction happens. Trigger, response, reward. You know, you get stressed, you smoke some crack, you get high, right? Trigger, the, the stress was a trigger. The response is smoking the crack. And, and then and then the reward is you get high, right? Trigger, response, reward, right? Or you get triggered, you get stressed. You know, the response is you eat a donut, like one of them little donut holes, right? Y'all know about the donut holes? Them little, they just little, little, little balls of little goodness that destroy you from the inside, right? You get stressed, you eat the little donut hole. And then you get you get high off the sugar. Well, what you got to do sometimes is break that habit between the trigger and the response. You got to kind of break that thing, right? So what happens is trigger, uh-oh, time to think. What, what do I really want? Do I really want some crack? No. What do I want? I want to I wanna solve the problem in a way that's a little healthier, right? So what I do, man, they so good, right? They so good. Munchkins, right? Right? Munchkin. And, and Mr. Thickman's like, nah, a whole donut. <laughs> right, Allie? You know what I mean? So what we do is trigger. We're home. We're exhausted. Right? Response. Turn on Netflix. Reward. Distraction. So maybe instead of me coming home and I pick up the remote, I take the batteries out the remote right now before I leave for work. Maybe I turn the television around so it faces the wall, right? Right? Now when I come home, trigger, but now I can respond instead of react. Now, now it's like I get to think about my response. Now I've taken responsibility and put it squarely on my shoulders. And now I can do the two-minute version. So maybe instead of me turning, Turning the TV right on because I got to go look for the batteries. And oh, yeah, I took the batteries out because I'm not going to freaking continue these patterns that are keeping me at less than my potential. I'm going to adopt a new kind of pattern right here. So before I look for the batteries and put them in the remote, I make three phone calls. Now the trigger gives me a new response because I took responsibility. I put the ability to respond on my shoulders, <laughs> right? And then I get a new uh, kind of reward. I get this reward called self-discipline. You know, I get this reward called self-respect. I get this reward called self-esteem. Now I'm really successful because nobody can see me working. Nobody can see me grinding right? But I'm doing it anyway. That's me going for wealth instead of status. You know, everybody does it in front of people. You know what I mean? That That's when everybody can do it when people are watching. But it's when I do it when nobody can even see. <laughs> see what I mean? That's when I start giving my self-respect. You see what I did there? It's self-determination that starts to grow. I start to get that feeling like, I'm chiseling myself out of stone right now. I start to get that feeling like I am the master of my fate and the captain of my soul. I start getting that feeling like I'm in the top 5%. I'm in the top 10%. I'm in the top 1% because I know what everybody else is doing, where I come from, what everybody else is doing in the company I'm in, what everybody else is doing in the city where I'm from, what everybody else is doing on a night like a Friday night. They all partying, but I took control of my life because right now my ec my life is an echo of what I did last year this time. So if I want a different future, I got to create a different voice. I got to be the dog, not the tail. You know what I mean? I got to be the voice, not the echo. If I want my future to be different, I got to change my present. You know what I mean? So what I did was I took the batteries out the remote. So now I got some time to think about my life. I do the two minute version. I don't have to make 30 phone calls. You understand? I just have to make one phone call or two phone calls or three. And next thing you know, I'm the kind of per person who comes home and makes phone calls before he turns on that television. And then that's how I would get out of slump. Did that help, bro? Did that help?
<laughs> yeah, and then you can then you can earn your donuts. You know what I mean? Then you can earn the donuts. Yeah, we going for wealth instead of status. Tell them, Queen. <laughs> uh, you crazy. Okay, okay. I love that, LaShondra. Let's go, Miss Butler. All right, um, somebody on the live line. Question number two. I'm looking through the comments for the next question after that. I know we had a couple. All right, good, Jamal. I'm glad to hear that, bro. Yeah, that's exactly right, Kermit. You got to get that gym bag ready so that you're ready for the, uh, so, so you're Exit not out here. Are on. Exit tones are off. All right, so star six when I mute your line. Exit tones are on. Entry and exit tones are off. Okay, I think this was question number two. What's the best way to regain your previous prospects back after they have gave up due to lack of leadership or misguidance? Man, that's a powerful question, Queen. So um, to me, the number one way is honesty. The number one way you get back people that are in your pipeline, um, because that's what we call, that's what we call uh, someone who used to rock with us and then maybe they've fallen off. We always say nobody buys instantly, but they all buy eventually from their friends. They all buy eventually from their friends. Um, from the person who's solving their problems, right? And so a lot of times um, we get scared of reapproaching people that we used to have because we feel a little embarrassed or we, we are scared of the rejection. We, we scared they're going to be like, I done told you. I done told you now. I don't, I don't want that. Don't come to me with, no, no, I done told you. So, so what you do, Queen, is you relax and be still and know that you know what i mean god is with us god is within us you know what i mean and at the end of the day entrepreneurs are here to solve problems y'all hear me tell this joke all the time but if i'm selling mink coats you understand um then what happens is i'm gonna go broke if i'm selling mink coats on the beach because mink coats keep you warm and people don't have that problem on the beach you get what I mean? Entrepreneurs solve problems. Is that fair, Tanisha? So now that I know entrepreneurs solve problems, what I have to do is make sure that I'm aware of what their problems are, right? I got to be aware of what their problems are. It does you no good to know my problem, but I didn't even tell you that. Um, imagine, Imagine these cats Fellas, how many of you can relate to this? You you walk around minding your own business, and then some dude walk up to you with his car like, hey, bro, I cut hair. It's like, what the hell? Now, I might have the problem of needing a haircut. I might need one right now, right? But I ain't tell you that, homeboy. You know what I mean? You're being a bit presumptuous, ain't you? What you're doing is begging because you didn't get me to express that problem to you. If I express the problem... And then you present your solution. Well, now you're helping me out. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? If, 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 if It's like, what you trying to say, homeboy? You know what I mean? Now I'm almost offended because I ain't even tell you my problem. That's the difference. I got to tell you my problem and then you present your solution. Does this make sense to somebody out there? Does this make sense to somebody out there? So what I'm saying is, if you present your solution before I've told you my problem, you're a beggar. If you present your solution after I tell you my problem, well, now you're a servant. And everybody ducks a beggar just like everybody loves a servant. That's the key to life right there. The secret to living is giving. So what we're saying right here is that if I'm trying to approach, reapproach a prospect, that was rocking with me and now they aren't, I don't have to get shook up. I just have to dig into their problems. So that's why we always say there are three P's to meaningful conversation, to what I call the comfort curve, right? Because everybody thinks it's about the learning curve and the learning curve comes into play, but really 
It's about how comfortable I make you. Nobody cares how much you know, Tanisha, until they know how much you care. This is a vital point. And where you have to be with these people is in a place where you realize you ain't lose them because they still got the same damn problems they had. So I would reapproach them. I would say, I owe you an apology. They're going to be like, what, girl? Girl, I was trying to tell you about this thing that I was working on and stuff, and I I talked about it all wrong. I messed completely up. I look at their personnel file, right? I pick out some of the problems. How's it going with your daughter? You still trying to get her in a private school, girl? Or how's it going with your with your with your credit? You, you know, are you still trying to fix your credit so you can get into a house in 2022? Or how's it going with the right? I'm being, I'm being, uh, you know, <laughs> you crazy, Mark. I'm being kind of nosy and stuff, you know, but what I'm trying to do is dig for problems that I can write in my personnel file. And since they might be gun shy, maybe I don't jump right into my solution right away. Maybe I just take the notes. I listen with an intent ear, right? Because I've got posture, you know, the three P's I was starting to get into is posture of a friend, not a salesperson, personnel file, because you never get a second chance to make a second impression. And then I'm looking to plug them in to the morning call. That way I can begin to build culture, et cetera, so forth, and have something to talk about that adds value to everybody's life instead of it just being like, I'm just hitting you up because I want you to buy something, right? So the reason that, that your posture of a friend, not a salesperson, is because they already deal with enough salespeople and everybody hates them. Everybody hates traditional salespeople, not the way we teach it here in Millionaire Minded, but the way that most people go about it, where it's so selfish. All they're doing is giving selfish asks all day. Would you like to buy something from me? Like, who are you? You know what I mean? So the reason that you are keeping notes is because this personnel file, i.e. a problem file, is full of stuff that has nothing to do with the product you sell and full of stuff that has uh, everything to do with their problems. So you're finding out personal information and you're finding out problems. You want to know their daughter's name, their son's name, you know, where they work, right? Some kind of personal info. And the more discernment you have, the less of this you need. But if you're trying to really get better if you're trying to get to that level where you are you are just super nice then um you might want to start off writing down what amounts to trivia about the person what is their personality type what kind of words are they using right um um and then what are their problems you're digging for problems you're asking them stuff like so how long did you intend to be at this job when you first got it that's one of my favorite questions like, hey, so is this your dream job or 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 um would you say you're just doing it for the money? I love questions like that. They be like, hell no, nah, this ain't my dream. What? Heck no. Nah, mental note. Not mental note, but actual note. I'm writing it down. Right? How much do you make at the job? How much would you like to make? How much would you need to be a little bit more comfortable? How long does it take you to get a raise? When are you up for your next raise, right? When are, you, when are you up for your next raise, girl? I know it can't be that bad, right? Sometimes we assume awesomeness, right? That, that's one way you get them complaining. You assume awesome, you know, and then they, they correct you. So you'd be like, man, I know you must love that job. Walmart, you get to meet all these people and stuff. And they're like, hell no, hell no right? And now you're jotting that down. Doesn't exactly like their job. You know what I mean? So now you got problems because you assumed awesome. Like, oh, I've heard the school district there is just incredible. And they're like, I don't know where you heard that. I feel like I just saw one of the teachers smoking crack, you know, but right? I don't know why this focus on crack today. Hope that's helpful. Um, so that's what I would do. I would get in. I would keep the posture of a friend, not a saleswoman. 
I would take all those notes in the personnel file and then I would plug them into something that can help them. You know, the reason I talk about these these morning calls is because, you know, we're always just helping entrepreneurs like y'all know how long we've been doing this for free, even before we started the Kaizen Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then use their personality to get a better perspective on how to approach them. Are they an analyzer, an empathizer, an organizer, a socializer? You know, which is summer, fall, spring, winter, not necessarily in that order. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that was helpful. Um, nah, I missed it, Mia. I missed it. But it's time for us to get on the live line anyway. So you can unmute yourself and ask on the live line. But you got to come do your affirmations first. <laughs> Y'all be scared of them affirmations. Y'all be scared of them affirmations. I'm telling you, them joints change your life. I Looking at my Gucci, it's about that time. All right, good, good, good. Okay. Van Dorian got her own sports drink? Oh, my God. And the CBD oil help with your son's autism, Shalonda? That's amazing, Queen. Oh, yeah, that's that's what we're going for, Mia. That's what, that's what we're going for. LLC versus sole proprietorship. Yeah, one protects you from lawsuits, et cetera, so forth, and one doesn't. But uh, what you really need is a trust, Mia. You really need a trust. You know, come on and um, rock with us, and we going to sell you a trust. You need a business trust or a family trust or a spendthrift trust. You need to make your children into trust babies. All right, let's go. All right, y'all, it's affirmation time. I got 801. We running a little bit late. Call in. Yeah, that's right. That's the number right there, queen. That's the number right there on the screen. Is Do I have too many emojis on the screen? Is that what it is? So people don't think that's a real number? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Demeter. Uh, you're so welcome. You so you so welcome, queen. All right, so call in right now. If your phone line charges you money, don't trip. Just just text call me to the number. Text call me to the number and it'll uh, call you. All right, y'all. Repeat after me. Let's get it. I am soul. 